What's up, Trade Hackers? Welcome to today's update. Today's Monday, March 23rd. Before we jump into the charts, we're going to start doing a Trade Hacker question of the day. So these are questions that have come in by email or posted in the community. We're going to try to keep them very timely to what's going on. So Hopefully this helps others that may have been thinking the same question but didn't ask it themselves. So today's question, do we really need circuit breakers? Won't traders ultimately determine the supply and demand of the markets? So just to, just to reiterate what that means is the if the S&P is down 7% while the markets are open, trading is going to automatically be halted by the exchanges for a period of 15 minutes. If it drops another 13%, it's gonna be halted another 15 minutes. And if it goes down 20% in a day, the markets are gonna close for the rest of the day. And so the question is, do we really need these circuit breakers? Won't the buying and selling and supply demand of the traders ultimately determine price? And I don't know the answer to this because obviously we don't know what would happen. We've seen, I think the markets hit the initial down 7% circuit breaker three times, maybe four. I think it was three times though, during this Corona crash that we're seeing. And so ultimately two out of the three times it paused and it actually rebounded and went up a little bit the rest of the day. The other one, it paused and then it ultimately continued lower. So whether or not do we really need these circuit breakers or not, I don't know the answer to that question. And I'm not going to act like you know, what I tell you is absolutely correct. I have my thoughts. I, I do think given the markets, given the computers time to catch up, given traders time to think and pause and take a breather, I think it's a good thing. And, you know, this doesn't happen very often where, where we are in a situation where these circuit breakers come into play. But, you know, back in, what was it, 2010, we had that flash crash. Uh, we've had other certain situations where I think, you know, that was kind of blamed on some high frequency or the algos and things like that. And, and who knows if that's really the case. But the bottom line is, in my opinion, I think these circuit breakers are a good thing. It just gives everybody a time to pause, breathe. I know when it's happened uh, while I'm trading, I will get up from the computer. I'll go do something else and just kind of let my thoughts kind of take me, take me where they may. But I think it's a good thing. You know, I think it just gives us a time to recoup and get back to potentially thinking a little bit more open-mindedly, not not letting, you know, if we're in a situation where our emotions are are really getting fired up because of the current situation, it gives us a chance to take a breather. So ultimately, I think it's a good thing. Whether or not the market actually reacts differently after the pause comes off, who knows? You know, we'll, we'll never really know the answer to that question, but... Let's jump in to what's going on today. No circuit breakers have hit today. The S&P is down 78. We've got about 14 minutes left until the market closes. S&P is down 78. Uh, the NASDAQ's only down about a half percent. It, it was actually trading positive for a lot of today. Dow, Russell, S&P all, all trading significantly lower. Oil catching a nice little bid today, up about 3%. Gold up big, up 5%, silver up 7%, bonds up 2.5%. So kind of a mixed bag in the market overall. Oh, and then the other thing I wanted to point out was, look at the VIX futures. Stocks down big, VIX down big. So volatility futures trading lower by over 14.5% when the market's down. Obviously, these two are typically on a inverse correlation, meaning if stocks are down, volatility is going to be up. But in this case, the VIX is, the volatility is getting crushed today, even with stocks down. Now, one thing to think about and consider when comparing the S&P 500, for example, let's just use the S&P as the market. When looking at the S&P and volatility, when this thing bottoms, that's not necessarily going to coincide with the peak of volatility. So let's say right now was the bottom. Well, volatility peaked several days ago and it's been contracting the last few days. Whereas if we look at SPX, it's hitting new lows since this downside has started. Now, let's take it a step further. If we go back in time and take a look at what happened in 2008. So I'm gonna go back 15 years on the charts in SPX 
And so let's scroll back to the 2008 situation. So, and I'll zoom in here. So this is 2008, the market bottomed in March of 2009. So it was that March 6th, I believe. Yeah, March 6th of 2009 is when the S&P bottomed. But look at where volatility hit its peak. So if we look at VIX during that same period, what you'll see here is the VIX peaked. It hit almost 90 back here in October of 2008. And it continued to contract and in March of 2009 was right here. So volatility had already contracted significantly. And so, you know, just kind of an interesting thing. So the volatility peak does not always coincide with the market bottom. So keep that in mind. Now, I'm not saying that volatility has peaked at this point during this session, but you know, it's certainly could have, it's starting to contract where the market's still going down. So now that happened several times throughout that 2008, 2009 situation where you had volatility contracting and the market was still continuing to hit new lows. So don't take this as the market is going to be bottoming soon and that volatility is peaked because this volatility could certainly turn around, spike even higher, and obviously the market continue to push lower. So I think we're, I still think we're going to see more lows uh, in the market. You know, I think a lot of this really just depends on the duration that things are shut down for the coronavirus, right? So you don't know how long these things are going to be shut down. A lot of areas are kind of on stay in your home orders until for, for the next month. But if that extends to two months to three months and this coronavirus really is not being able to held under wraps, that financial devastation to individuals and companies is going to extend longer as well. So we just never know what's going to happen. So again, you've got to stay small. You've got to stay mechanical. And that's what we talk about and teach every day. So what did we do today? Well, we just continued to roll down our short delta positions. So we had several positions that we just rolled down, continuing to extend duration, keep those short delta positions in our portfolio as the market continues to go lower. Uh, we added a an iron duck in SPY. So we got a big buffer to the downside with no risk to the upside if this thing does make a bounce. We did have a position in Roku. Let's take a look at Roku, which we're not doing a ton in individual stocks right now, just because there's so much implied volatility, so much juice in in, in the broad markets. But you know, Roku up 16% today. We had a reverse duck on here, so we went ahead and just bailed on that with that big spike today. So we are out of our Roku trade. But taking a look at some of these other stocks, you know, Apple down a few percent, Amazon up a couple percent, kind of a mixed bag across the board, a lot of red and green, not just all bearish, not just all bullish by any means. You know, Home Depot up 6%, at Macy's is under $5, down another 20% today. I'm not sure Macy's is going to make it through this. I mentioned Roku up 16%. Some of these others, look at Wynn Casino. Wynn's been catching a bid the last few days. You know, so it's up over 11% today and, and it's third day in a row that it's catching a little bit of a bid. So we're seeing some some upside in stocks and we're seeing some more downside. I mean, United Healthcare are down, you know, five and a half percent. So it, it continues to to trade lower. So a lot of crazy stuff still going on. So again, just keep your position size small and stay mechanical and we'll talk to you tomorrow. See ya.